All right, this is an attribute that a lot of entrepreneurs need to have in running a business. If you want to get through a breakthrough in your life, you want to get a breakthrough in your personal finances, you want to get a breakthrough in the next development and get to the next best version of you, you got to have this one thing, and this one thing is called mental toughness. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Team headquarters here in Oak Brook Terrace, team headquarters of the PHP agency, leading the number one office in the United States, as well as Puerto Rico. And uh, I'm, I'm really blessed to have these guys on the show today, on the Movement Show, to talk about mental toughness. Uh, the first guest I'd like to bring to your attention is United States Marine Corps Devil Daug, Rob Jones. He served in our country in, in the United States Marine Corps. He was a, uh, a combat engineer. Is that right in saying that, uh, Rob? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Combat engineer, he was sweeping a minefield. And next thing you know, he runs into, instead of him finding the, uh, the, the, the IED, the IED found him. So uh, he was in an ex explosive blast, and he is um, uh, amputated above the knee on both of his legs. And uh, Sports Illustrated uh, did a piece on him, I think it was last November, right? right, uh, uh, right. Uh, did a piece on him last October, November, and he ran 31 marathons on bionic legs in 31 days. Unbelievable. And uh, this next gentleman too here also, I have some kinship to, and not uh, not just uh, not just uh, uh, being a marine, but uh, we have a kinship to this gentleman here, uh, Shorty Torres, hails from my former high school, out of the Berwyn Cicero Stickney neighborhood, a very very wealthy neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> not really, uh, but uh, he comes. He graduated a Morton, uh, hailing from Combat Doe, Master Bob. Right, uh, do some big things in the MMA world. So, gentlemen, welcome to the Money Smart Movement Show, man. Good to have you guys. Thanks for having us on, man. Oh, it's a pleasure to be on. Good, good. So, Rob, let's let's start with you, War Dog. Um, let's talk about that, man. L lots of times, people are getting started in business, and you are on the show because you're going to eliminate a lot of excuses from people watching the show today. <laughs> right? uh, I hope so. I'm gonna do. I'll do my best. Yo, people didn't call my call me back. They returned my voicemail. People say no to me. I'm making sales calls. I'm doing business development. But people say no to me. Rob, listen, man, you ran 31 marathons in 31 days with bionic legs. So, yep. you know, so let's talk about that, man. What was it like for you to just learn how to walk again? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it took uh it took a lot of getting used to. I, took, I spent my first month after being wounded just uh, laying in bed healing. Uh, you know, the body takes a while to do what it needs to do in terms of that. So I took about six months or six weeks, sorry, for me to heal up to the point where I could even put prosthetics on. And then at that point, you know, it took me another week or so. Uh, to just to get used to even having them on. And so what, what you need to do is have them on and then your body needs to adapt to the new way of moving and the different places where pressure is being put on your residual limb, uh, on the bottom of it and just on different different parts now. So you kind of have to develop a callus for that in a way. And so I spent you know a little bit of time just getting comfortable even having them on my body and then, you know, just took little baby steps, uh, practiced, you know, every day I would go in for, you know, at first I'd go in for an hour. And then by the time I left, I'd be going in for four or five hours a day, just, you know, adding skills and practicing and practicing and practicing and just making small little milestones as I went. So, so Rob, give us a visual here because, you know, I've got both my legs and, and Shorty, you know, he's a, he's an MMA fighter and, He's, he's, he can fight on uh, standing up or get, have a sick ground game. Yeah. What's it like for you to, to run? Because I'm watching you run, and it's like you're keeping – you're like almost keeping your balance every time you, you're stepping out there, man. So can you give us a little – like a description of what it's like to run on bionic legs? Yeah. Um, it's, very, it's like running on springs, uh, basically. So the, the way the, the prosthetic foot works is it's just a, a C-shaped piece of carbon fiber – and there's no knee joint to it. Uh, my walking legs, I walk around with a knee joint, and it articulates and that kind of thing, but there's no knee joint. And 
it doesn't have a heel on it, so it's actually just about impossible to stand still. Um, so if I'm just standing around, I'm kind of shifting in between legs because there's no way to balance on just that little bit of uh, the toe. And since there's no knee, I have to swing my legs to the outside in order to take a step uh, because you can't just swing your leg forward without bending your knee and getting your foot out of the way. So in order to, to actually walk or run, I swing it out to the side. So what I do is I kind of load it up uh, for my first step, load up one of them, and that kind of bounces me up, and then I kind of get going, swinging my legs out to the side. So I swing my leg out to the side, land on that one. That one takes the weight and then pushes me off, and then I swing the other one around and catch myself, and that one takes the weight and pushes off, and I just repeat that. And besides that, the basic principles to, uh, of running is pretty much exactly the same. You know, you're using your body to produce momentum, and then – the foot is uh, feeding off that momentum and pushing you forward. Yeah. And, and, and Rob, I, I, I gather, man, you've got to have gone through some very dark moments, you know, coming from, uh, from Iraq, uh, going through rehab and all this stuff, man. So how did you push through it? How, how, how did you stay mentally tough? Learning how to walk again and rehabbing and, and, and learning how to walk again. Uh, well, it's mostly just about determining what I wanted most. Uh, what was my mission? My mission was to, well, before I was wounded, my mission was to make a difference in the world and have an enjoyable life. And so I get wounded and now my legs are above the knee, uh, amputated above the knee. And I have to ask myself, well, does being a double above knee amputee change my life's mission? And the answer to that was no. And so I still wanted those things, even though I'm now an amputee. And so really just became a matter of finding my new path and how I was going to accomplish those things. And so, you know, that's a pretty broad uh, objective to have. So along the way, I kind of had to say, well, first things first, get into my wheelchair. And so I would just, you know, that's what's most important right now. And then I would do everything I needed to do in order to get into the wheelchair. And then, you know, now, okay, now learn how to walk. And so when things got tough, uh, or I got tired or sore or whatever it may be, I remembered you know, that the most important thing for me right now is I'm trying to learn how to walk, and that's more important than uh, being comfortable right now or being not tired right now. So I need to keep going towards that that overall most important mission. You know, Rob, one of the things that Sports Illustrated said about you is that uh... – one big motivation for you is to run these marathons, 31 marathons in 31 days, is because you want to have people, which is one of my favorite fa phrases, which is to constantly discover the next best version of you. Right. Um, and, and so I think throughout this process, what was, what's one thing that you, if you were to boil down on one thing, Rob, what's one thing you took away from running those marathons in 31 days? Um, I think it's just uh... – what I like to call use the weight. And what I mean by that is uh, when you're faced with a problem or a tragedy or an issue, uh, you have a couple of choices. You can either just handle that issue, just uh, endure it for as long as you can until eventually it wears you down. And you're like, if you had a barbell on your shoulders that eventually wear you down, you'd be pinned beneath the barbell. Um, or you can lift the barbell over your shoulders and strict press it and use that weight to adapt and become stronger. Um, and then eventually you get to a point where the weight that you're lifting is nothing and it's easy to lift and you can handle more. And then you say, well, bring me more weight because you want to get stronger. And so it's the same thing where you're using these tragedies or hardships or challenges that come your way and you're turning them into tools for yourself. And by doing so, you become stronger and stronger, and then eventually you can handle more problems, and you just keep using these, and then you keep going stronger, 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 until eventually there's nothing in the world that you can't, you know, handle. And you're actually you become proud of all the stuff that you can pile on yourself, and be fine. Just keep using it. That's it, my man. And for those of you guys watching it right now and tuning in, thanks for joining the Movement Podcast Show. Uh, we appreciate you guys for tuning in. If you wouldn't mind, it says sharing is caring. Let the world know, man, that there's people out there 
that needs to be more mentally tough. You need to be more mentally tough. I need to be more mentally tough. You want to share this because you want yourself and other people in your network to be more mentally tough. So let's let's talk to uh, uh, Shorty. Let's transition to Shorty. Shorty, listen, man. Um, Thirty-one win streak right now in the MMA. 30, 31 wins without a defeat. Uh, fights in a Titan FC. He's fighting February sixteenth at the Extreme Action. Uh, uh, what is it again? Extreme Action. Yeah, so Extreme Action Park Titan FC forty-eight. I'm the headliner over uh, three title bouts, and it's it's really cool. It's my third title defense, and you know I'm I'm only six and zero, but I have two belts, and I've defended both of them already. You know, so I'm just. You know, waiting for the next thing in line, and that's the UFC. But, you know, things just haven't been working out well, so I have to take this fight, defend another belt, and just keep on doing my job until, you know, the next big thing shows up. That's it, man. Very good. Well, listen, as a, as an act, it, 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 Titan FC is still in the octagon, right? Yeah, well, so they have, a, I believe it's called a hectagon for a, for Titan FC. Sorry, what, what's a hectagon? Is that six sides? Octagon. Like six, I, yeah, so the Octagon Day, and I mean, different promotions do different things. Some people even still use a ring, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it gives you a different feel. But I mean, this thing is huge. There's a lot of space to move. And for me, I'm a forward guy. So it, it's really hard to run away from me. It doesn't matter how big the cage is. All right, man. Well, listen, um, uh, you get hit in the face for a living. Uh, yeah, a lot. <laughs> you uh, and, and as much as you're looking to hit people in the face, they're, they're looking to do the same to you. Mm hmm. So, I mean, what's that like? I mean, for, for a lot of people, you, you, I mean, you're going hand-to-hand, man, hand-to-hand -hand, uh, physical combat. Uh, what's it like to get in a ring, man? Tell, take us through that moment. Are you nervous? Are, are, you, are you, like, cool and chill? What's it like? Um, now I'm definitely cool and chill after so many MMA fights and just amateur fights and kickboxing, and Muay Thai. You, you know, you just get acclimated to it. But now is, you know, the – the stakes, you know, started getting higher and higher. Now I'm, you know, two belt champ. I have a lot of uh, one of the biggest prospects outside the UFC that haven't been signed yet. You know, there's a lot of hype under me. So it's always that, man, what if I lose? You know, so I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. Everyone right now, it doesn't matter who it is, they're calling me out trying to get what I have. You know, no one's ever done what I've been able to do at 6-0. Conor McGregor was one of the first two belt champions for Cage Warriors before he became a two belt champion in UFC. He did, a, he did that at 14-2. and two. I did that at five and zero, oh, you know. So and I defended one of them at the time, you know, before I ended up becoming five and zero. Oh. So I've done a lot of work very, very fast. But I can tell you when I I, I ended up losing my amateur debut, um, given whatever the circumstances could have been, I, I definitely shouldn't have fought the guy. The guy was five and zero, oh, the champ, and I bumped up last minute fight because my opponent didn't show up. But I ended up losing a split decision, and honestly that split decision changed my life i was that cocky teenager thinking that i don't have to go to practice i'm naturally very talented i know what i can do yada 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 and i just didn't put in the work and when i got in there um as prideful as i was i was terrified yeah i'm like one i'm a teenager man world star i'm gonna get knocked out all my friends are gonna put it on social media and two was i've never fought mma before you know i've been doing muay thai i've been doing kickboxing you're wearing 10 ounce gloves mma you're wearing four ounce gloves. These are pretty much just bare knuckle boxing. Like the pad is literally this thick. So it, I definitely, you know, wasn't ready for it and I got beat up because of it. And well, after that, you know, it took almost about a year off to really recover and really just start training because I knew I needed to do it. And well, you know, 31 fights later, I'm, I'm at where I'm at today. Two time world champ as an amateur, two time world champ in two different weight divisions as a pro and, you know, two time defending champ as well. And hopefully three time very, very soon. What type of advice would you give to somebody who does take a loss? I mean, we've got people here as entrepreneurs or taking a stab at biz at the business world for the very first time. A lot, a lot of transitioning veterans from the military. Uh, there's taking a stab in the business. And so, like Mike Tyson said, everybody's got a plan until they get hit in the mouth. So, uh, right. So, so, so you take your first defeat, you get hit in the mouth. What do you do? It's a huge thing. You know, like me, I'm starting my own business now, teamshorter.com, where I sell my own apparel and then, and I'm starting to learn as as more as I become an adult, you know, I'm 25 years old, where I need to start thinking of other ventures instead of just MMA because MMA is not going to last forever. Hey, maybe I get punched in the mouth a little too hard and I just can't fight again. You know, so I got to think for myself different things. And whether it be an MMA or business, I've learned in both ways now that, I mean, everything bad is going to happen to you. That's the point. If you do this sport long enough, everything's bad, you know, is going to happen to you. In one fight, I ended up getting dropped, stuck in a guillotine, tearing my MCL and breaking my hand in the first round. 
And I still had to go 20 more minutes in that fight to win my second championship, which I did. But I can tell you, I never expected something like that to happen very, very early in my career. One, I'm glad it did, but I learned, you know, I learned how to overcome things. You know, people's, I think the, the biggest thing is people's biggest fear. And I believe Rob can, you know, definitely attest to this is it's mental. Your worst enemy is yourself. When I lost my first match, I definitely was a lot more talented than the guy. I just mentally defeated myself before I went in there. I thought, oh, what if I lose? What if this? What if that? If you think that, you're going to freeze up. If you notice anything in life, if you're a kid, the kids who were careless and just went out there and tried it never really got hurt. Whether they succeeded or not, they never really got hurt. But when you see that kid in the football field that's too scared to tackle, for some reason, they're always in the sideline because of the first ones that get injured. you got to go out there and try it. You know, you won't know until you try. And if you don't give it your all, you're always going to say what it should have cut us. So your biggest enemy is yourself. My biggest opponent doesn't matter who's in front of me, you know, inside the cage. It's pretty much myself. You know, I've done everything to, to train against some of the best in the world. TJ Dillashaw, Hennon Burrell, John Dotson, Cup Swanson. I mean, the list goes on and on. But the, the whoever's in front of me, I'm prepared for it. Is Am I prepared for myself? Am I prepared to just go over that obstacle and keep on pushing forward? Let's, let's talk about uh, pushing forward. Um, Rob, I want to ping, off, ping this off of you. You're in a marathon. You're in a bike. And by the way, the, you, you, you had a bike ride all the way from the East Coast that ended up in the West Coast. Yeah. That's a long bike ride. Uh, <laughs> it's what, a waste. Yeah. What happens when you hit a wall, man? What happens when you hit a, a physical wall? What's, what's easier to get past, a physical wall or a mental wall? Uh, I'd say a physical wall is easier to get. I mean, the body does what the mind tells it to do. So if your, your mind is at a wall, then, uh, it doesn't matter what your body can do really. Um, I think if, you know, when, when I, when things get tough for me, it's, it's just back to what I was saying before. It's just remember what you want the most. Um, and then go from there. So if, if I want to run a marathon and that's the thing I want the most in life, then six months out, if I don't feel like training, then I train anyway, because I want to to run the marathon more than I don't want to, uh, to run that day. Uh, if that makes sense. Yep. Gotcha, man. What what, what about, what about you, Shorty? What's, what's, what's easier for you to get past a physical uh, wall or a mental wall? Yeah, man, the easier is definitely physical. You know, just like Rob said, if if the mind tells you to do it, the body's going to follow, you know, and it's, you know, for me, I have to cut weight. I have to, you know, fight a guy who's definitely trained as hard as I have, who's trained against some of the best in the world. And the biggest fear, again, is myself. You know, I know I can go over against some of the best in the world, but if I start to doubt myself, if I start to, you know, doubt my abilities and what I've really, you know, started the sport for, then I go in there already losing before, you know, even actually fighting, you know, so the biggest thing is being able to be mentally prepared. Those physical things, I mean, anybody can pass it. Yeah, it takes some time. It takes some, you know, endurance and whatever the case may be to get through it. But it, 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 everything is mental. Everything is mental. Again, like right now, I'm eight days out until my weight cut and uh, until I have to make weight. And right now, the biggest thing is mental. I know physically I can get up and run. You know, I have to run almost like about six to eight miles a day, getting my weight cut down or 45 minutes in the sauna. But, you know, I know I could do it, but it's here that starts to bring me down and, oh, I'm eating less, I'm drinking less, whatever the case may be. I know I can do it. I just got to keep on pushing forward and then just be mentally strong. Rob, what's one of the first things you do to kind of trick trick your mind to stay mentally tough? You, you know, you're facing a wall, you're pushing past your physical limitations, you push past your limitations, another, another thing starts attacking you. What's one thing you get to everybody watching this right now, either live or on the replay? So that, man, this is one thing I do to, to get my mind to be more mentally tough. Um, I would say develop it before you need it. Um, practice. I mean, it's just like a it's just like a muscle. Um, the more you the more you use it, the the stronger it becomes, and so. And you can't go, you know, like just like you can't go and bench press a thousand pounds right away. Uh, you can't, you know, make a thousand changes all at once either. Um, so you kind of need to. I've been, I'm not, I'm, I'm at this point in my life now where I can, you know, I'm pretty mentally strong. But it's been 
you know, 10 years in development since I, since I joined the Marine Corps. So I've had a lot of practice at it too. And so, but the best thing to do is just recognize, uh, really truthfully ask yourself the question, you know, am I coming up with excuses right now? Am I rationalizing, um, a reason to quit right now? Or is this truly something that I've done everything that I can do and, uh, I truly either I can't or I need more practice or it's not what's best for me to do right now. So ask yourself that question and then truthfully give yourself the answer. And f- from that, you'll kind of know what what you need to do. I mean, you'll know the answer. Oh, man. Jordy, what about you, man? Answer that same question. How do you how do you prepare yourself to be more mentally tough? Man, it's definitely hard. You got to put yourself in this situation. Like Rob said, it's muscle memory. You know, I. I've never been in certain situations, but it's also the the path of finding out. You know, again, I had one fight where I broke my hand, tore my MCL, got dropped, stuck in the guillotine. I was never expecting to be put through that in any type of fight, but it happens. You see, you hear boxers breaking their hands all the time. You know, that's just, it happens during the fights and they got to be able to overcome it somehow, some way. For me, I've been able to overcome it and now I've been you know, a little more like prepared for it just in case it happens again. You know, I get beat up in camp all the time where my hand hurts again or my knees bugging me or whatever the case may be. I still have to keep on pushing forward and stay mentally strong. I think the biggest strength for me is I remember why I started this. You know, I, I started this not to become a champion and all that stuff. If that all happens, that's awesome. But I started this to become a hero. You know, when I was four years old, I watched Power Rangers, Dragon Ball Z, you know, kids cartoon shows where, you know, the, the, the good guys fought for good. So for me, I always wanted to be a hero. This is my way of doing it. And every time I win, I keep on inspiring people. So even though I'm going through my struggle and I'm, I'm weight cutting and then I just don't want to do it, I hear people sending me text messages, social media, like, hey, man, good job. You're an inspiration, yada, yada, yada. It, it builds me up. The more I motivate people, it motivates me. And so I keep on pushing to do things that people, you know, aren't willing or trying, you know, able to do. But it motivates them to do whether, you know, it's, it's MMA or even their own business ventures. You know, being able to get up and try, and that's what I'm trying to say. If this shorty can do it, and so can you. So my motivation is my ultimate goal. Rob, I, I got a question for you, man. You, you in, you've been in rowing. You've mm-hmm. been riding a bike. You're running. Mm-hmm. You shorty alluded to it. How important is it to have the right people in your corner, either cheering you on or actually coaching you, getting your face and helping you blast and be more mentally tough? Okay. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good point to bring up because I didn't do any of this stuff ever since – Ever since I joined the Marine Corps, I've, I've had people help me out from you know, my recruiter to the drill instructors to fellow Marines. And then when I got hurt, I had, you know, a cadre of uh, medical professionals uh, all helping me. And when I did rowing, I had coaches. And when I did the bike ride, my brother was there supporting me. Uh, when I did my marathons, uh, my wife and my mom and uh, were there along the whole time. So, you know, I'm the one – that's getting all the attention and getting all the praise and kind of at the the peak of this pyramid. But uh, the base of the pyramid is a lot bigger. um, And the peak of it, it wouldn't be anything. You wouldn't care about the peak of the pyramid unless the base was below it. And that's so my supporters are what make me, you know, the top of that pyramid. Uh, But without them, I wouldn't, you know, I would be on this, interview because you wouldn't even know who I was and you wouldn't really care. Yeah, well, we definitely got you on our, uh, our Instagram <laughs> profile, man. I appreciate you dropping a comment on. Uh, oh, my pleasure. By the way, have you met Brandon yet? By the way, Brandon, you want to say hi real quick? So he, he, he's been yeah. a lot, but this, this, this hey, is. So, uh, <laughs> What's up, dude? Nice to see you. <laughs> Very good, man. Sh- Shorty, how important is it for you? I mean, because you're, you're in a sport where it's very easy to have an entourage. You know, and, 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 and when I when I did the broke series for ESPN 30 for 30, uh, it, it was very easy for an entourage to be draining the, the players' finances and time. So how important is it for you to have the right people in your corner? No pun, actually pun intended. Yeah, well, it's it's crazy. You know, for me, I stay as loyal as possible. You know, I like to travel and train and get different looks. And as my popularity grows, more and more people try to jump on the bandwagon. So it's you know, it's harder and harder to trust people because now they see me and they want to take care of me, which is awesome, but it's more for the money side. You know, everyone's like, oh man, this kid, you know, if we invest in him, it's going to be great. Come on. Yeah. Let's, you know, we're going to help you out. We're going to help you out. And 
out of nowhere, somehow like a big bill comes on, you know, off the plane. It's like, whoa, 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 you know, so it's a big difference for me. I stay loyal, you know, Master Bob Shermer, where I started when I was 16, combat, that was always in my corner. My brother, my nutritionist, nutrition, who's not just my dietitian and nutritionist, but he's also my mental coach, somebody who keeps me mentally strong, prepared for, you know, again, days like today where I have to weight cut and get ready for the fight. You know, for me, I keep a, a nice small knit where it's just my group of people where these are the only people I can trust. If I need to tell a secret, if I need to tell or even just just get some information or even just need to vent, these are the guys I need to talk to. All the fans and all the supporters, I appreciate all their love and, and support. And sometimes there are those trolls out there that, that want to be across in the van wagon. But for me, you know, I, I keep my small knit group together. And those are those, you know, the picture of all the lions, you know, coming together and walking forward in the pack. Mm-hmm. This is my group of lions. And for me, this is this is what keeps me motivated. You know, surround yourself with people. Right now, I'm actually staying in a dorm where every single day, it's kind of almost like a military life. Right downstairs, I go to training. And I'm training almost nine hours a day. And then at night, I just come back upstairs with the guys that were just finished training. We all just play video games, have fun, and it's a bunch of camaraderie, you know. So for us, we're all motivating each other. Actually, the two guys next door are two guys that are fighting in the co-main event. And uh, it's it's just cool that we're all weight cutting together. We're all pushing each other. And, again, everyone's doing this together. So I, I keep my group small knit, and uh, we all just motivate each other to push forward. So it's good to be around a bunch of guys that's got – the same goals also in mind and you guys are pushing each other to the same, the same uh, level of success. Yeah. And I mean, there's some guys and I'm pretty sure, you know, both of you guys know where, you know, there's always those doubters that, that have something to say and that's great. Everyone's opinion matters, but it doesn't mean you have to take in every single opinion, you know? So for me, I push forward again, I have my own little business and it's very hard to start, but I'm still pushing it forward. I'm still trying to find different business ventures to keep on going just in case, you know, somehow MMA doesn't work out well. And, I get injured enough where I just can't do it anymore. So for me, I'm pushing forward and keeping my knit, you know, uh, my my group just close together and, and trying to grow everyone together with me. Gotcha. Well, let's wrap up on that note. So um, one last question for you guys before I let you guys go. Uh, Rob, how does one keep yourself, because you're, you're talking to a group of entrepreneurs that are watching this, how, how do you best monetize or create revenue from where you're at right now for life after the Marine Corps? You know, is there a fundraising that you can fund a nonprofit so you like you're, you're the executive director for it? And and what can we do as a community to help you out? Oh, man, I couldn't tell you how to make money. I've lost money on all my stuff that I've done. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I do all my, my – um, my fundraising ventures, the, the bike ride and the, the month of marathons I did were both – um, you know, awareness uh, about the, the struggles of veterans and the fact that veterans are a lot stronger than you may think and even a lot stronger than they may think and that a wounded veteran is not a broken veteran. So raising awareness about that and then also raising funds for the charities that do help veterans. Um, I was raising money for the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, Tunnel to Towers Foundation, the Semper Fi Fund. Uh, I don't have my own uh, 501c3 or anything. I just uh, recognize the ones that I – that I believe in, and I just raise money for them. Gotcha. And, and, and by the way, Rob, where can people find more information about you? Is it robjonesjourney.com? Yep, robjonesjourney.com, and all of my social media is at robjonesjourney. Robjonesjourney.com, guys. So if yeah. you guys are watching this show, make sure you visit Rob Jones' website at robjonesjourney.com. Go ahead and support. Yeah, uh, by the way, I understand that you're, uh, you're a speaker. You're a motivational speaker. You go and, and speak around the country too as well. Yeah, that's one of the things I've started doing since uh, I finished was just to continue to try and com- compound on the message that I started spreading uh, with the marathons. And so I'm trying to keep, you know, getting that message out there. And one way to do that is uh, instead of running my body, just to run my mouth a little bit. So I try and do that <laughs> a bit. And you need to be mentally tough. To do yeah. That. yeah, you do. <laughs> What about, what about you, Shorty? What's, uh, how do you best monetize your platform? Because I know you got social media going on too as well, shirts, gear, all this stuff. How, how does a fighter, if, if there's a fighter, if there's a, if there's a veteran coming out and he wants to be a fighter and he wants to monetize his platform, uh, what type of uh, suggestions would you give them? Man, it's definitely, I can tell you now as the popularity grows and, and I'm becoming more busy with interviews and just busy with life in general, it does get more complicated. Again, I keep my, my group tight together where I have people helping me out, whether it be sponsors or people shipping my gear, people making my gear uh, um, and just people help, helping me overall and, and giving me the best advice. One of the biggest things is 
again, you can listen to everything. doesn't mean you have to take it in. So for me, I'm taking, you know, every single type of advice possible, whether for it be from businessmen, people who had small businesses fail, small businesses grow into big businesses or becoming franchises. And uh, that's something where I'm looking forward to, you know, in the future where, you know, where hopefully I make a, a good paycheck and just in case, you know, I have that paycheck instead of saving it up and keeping it for myself. I want to be able to invest in different businesses and, you know, see where it goes from there and see where, see where the world takes me. But, you know, for me, again, it's, I have to be mentally strong and mentally prepared for, you know, for what's to come. Again, my MMA career can go bad. My small business can go bad, but it's, again, I have to keep on pushing through and, you know, see where it goes from there. Gotcha. So I, I guess both of you guys um, aren't scared of failing forward. Would that be a good way, good way to put it? I would do you're gonna fail. You do this sport. You do anything long enough. Everything's gonna happen to you. And yeah. Rob, I think instead of failing forward for you, I think you spring forward. Yeah. Well, you know, every failure teaches a lesson. So you know, like when I was 2015 and 16, I was trying to make the Paralympics for triathlon, and I failed. I didn't do it. But what I learned over the course of those two years was I had a, a decent talent for running, and here we are, run, uh, run, ran a bunch of marathons. So. You know, you just have to pay attention to, you know, what's what the failure is teaching you and try and uh, learn from it and then forget about it. Awesome, gentlemen. Well, I appreciate you guys' time. By the way, guys, if you uh, have been tuning in and been listening to this stuff, dr drop them some love in those comments, man. I appreciate you guys as we're wrapping things up, man. Plenty of value from Rob Jones and <clears throat> your journey, robjonesjourney.com. Learned a ton of stuff from you today, man. I it's, it's an honor for me to call you from Marine to Marine. It's an honor to call you a brother. My honor, and, man. And, and Rob, the, you know, Shorty Torres got mentored in the MMA fighting world because his because uh, his uh, instructor is Master Bob Shermer, and he is a former recon Marine, too, as well. Oh, Roger that. Awesome. He's in good hands, yeah, so, man. <laughs> so, I definitely took a beating and uh, got, got a tough upbringing, but – because of it, man, I've, I've been able to push through a lot. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to do that. How old was uh, Master Bob when he took his last professional fight? He was 50 years old. He was 50 years old when he took his last professional fight. Talk about being mentally. Wow. wow. Hey, yeah, you're you know, right. he, he still does these wheelie sit-ups uh, sit you know, to celebrate his 60-year-old birthday. Yeah, <laughs> so he did He did 62 uh, wheel-ups, if you want to call them. So he gets the wheel, goes all the way down from standing up, not from the knees, standing up all the way down, all the way back. He did 62 of them this year because he's 62 years old. It's crazy. Dang. <laughs> I can't even do that now. I mean, this, this guy's ridiculous. <laughs> he's got old man strength. It, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Guys, appreciate you, man. And for those of you tuning in, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Make sure you catch us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter on YouTube at Money Smart Guy. And uh, make sure you check out these guys' website. We'll be posting their links in the comment sections before uh, below. It's robjonesjourney.com for Rob Jones, United States Marine Corps, and for Team Shorty, uh, Shorty Torres. And by the way, Shorty, let's promote your fight one last time. At February 16th, where? In Fort Lauderdale, it's actually live on UFC Fight Pass for people who don't have the promotion. And in the Chicagoland area, I'll put lounge on the – I believe it's 1738 West Grand Nav. We'll be showing the fights live. But UFC Fight Pass, UFC.tv, a free seven-day trial. If you want to sign up, check it out. But you get to watch all my fights on replay. And even just in case you miss it, it's always there and available for you to watch. That's it, man. So make sure you subscribe to our channel at YouTube. Subscribe. Hit the part of the notification squad. Same thing, too, here on Facebook. Make sure you mash that like button. And every Wednesday, we get together. Have a conversation like this with leaders in their sports, leaders in their industry, guys making it happen in today's modern era. That being said, guys, on behalf of Shorty Torres, on behalf of Rob Jones, United States Marine Corps, thanks for tuning in to the Movement Podcast. Till we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.